Hi, I'm Carl Griggs, and today we're on our first CPC podcast, and I'm joined by Hardeep Tour from Savoy Properties. Hi, Carl. Thanks for having me. So, right. can you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your background? Sure. Um, so, Hardeep Tour. Um, my background is uh, from a career perspective. Uh, our background is a QS uh, for a number of years. Um, since then, become on to uh, start my own business, which we'll touch on. Uh, then, becoming an investor. Um, with, with the help of yourself and, and, and others, and now a partner in the Savoy's development company. That's a, in summary, you're a QS, yep. an investor. Yeah. You run my tours. Correct. And now a partner in Savoy Developments. Yeah, when you say it like that, it sounds like I'm doing a lot, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's a natural progression. It's, it's happened over a number of years. And with my tours, because uh, that's how you got into Savoy Development. So what's the yeah. background on that? So I started my tour uh, about five years ago, which essentially is a property inspection and marketing company. Um, so what I mean by that is we work with uh, universities, developers, build to rent developers, doing inspections on letting. So this is more for like protection of deposits. So when you get an inventory done, when you're moving a new tenant in, um, and the whole reason behind why I started it was just from bad experience of my own deposit being handled from when I was renting. So um, I created that, uh, as I said, five years ago, and then it naturally led into more the virtual tours and kind of the marketing side when COVID hit, because um, a lot of our clients essentially couldn't do viewings, obviously in that yeah. period. So we heavily invested in some uh, 3D technology, which we still do today. So we do a lot of marketing on them um, for, for a lot of agents, but as well as uh, retail gyms, because obviously once a virtual tour kind of blew up during that COVID period, it was just crazy. So we were getting inquiries from everywhere. And a lot of people have stayed with it and not gone back to the old way. Yeah, so just to give you an example, I mean, property is one obviously example for marketing, but um, especially for HMOs and rooms that are you're gonna keep for a very long time, you can not only have a virtual tour on them, but also provide informative inf- like information through the virtual tour. So for example, a lot of the HMOs we did, we used to put compliance documents within the tour itself. So it's embedded, so rather than an agent saying, I'll go here to check the certificate for this or whatever it is, you can actually give them a virtual tour which will embed information about the property safety um, rules and all this kind of, any rules of the house that you have. So it was quite a good little tool for a lot of the HMO developers during that COVID period. I know it's jumping around a bit, but you also use these tours now with stage releases on the projects that you're doing with Savoy Developments. Yeah, so what's really uh, fundamental for on the development side is that these tours, because they have infrared te- technology, they're, you're able to do a lot of off-site measurements. So a lot of my sites that we find for clients and for my own, um, I can actually send that tour to our architect or engineer who can um, quite easily create measurements, create plans from them without having to physically attend site. So you can imagine how much time that will save Mm -hmm. for a lot of these um, sites. And you can also export it into kind of um, DWG format, which is a lot of the architects kind of CAD format that they need. So it become a really powerful tool, not only for the marketing, but also for appraising sites. Yeah, and it can, which we've had between us, it can sometimes save the QS revisit in for a stage draw out. They rely on the the tools that you send them. Yeah, so, Typically, as I said, when, when we're getting a lender that will uh, hire a QS to do the report, they obviously need to physically attend, but where they can't or where it's um, easier that, you know, if they allow it, we will provide that uh, tour for them. Um, and like I said, they can easily kind of go through the whole property and actually check any details um, through that tour because it's quite quite in-depth. Um, it's not just Also, a, that, that'll give them, actually, going forward, that'll give them proof of what was done at that stage and that'll be yeah. filed away rather than a report just saying, yeah, I checked it and I looked at it. They, they've got something they can fall back on. Yeah, and on top of that is date stamps. So we can't really lie about when we've done it because it's, it's, a, it's a date stamp to when we've done that tour. So it's quite crucial that for from a QS point of view, if they are looking to do drawdowns, etc., you providing that information, that they have all that kind of background uh, information about it when it's been done uh, at what time it was done and it's very very detailed in that in that aspect so it, it works really well mm, it worked certainly did work well and then from there that led on to the introduction with Savoy Properties because you started working with them on yeah. that so yeah during Covid um, we had we started doing some work for uh, Savoy's uh, on a lot of their HMOs so they were quite the early <clears throat> they embraced the technology quite early 
Um, so I think even before COVID hit, they were doing these, albeit with a different company at the time. Um, we got involved. We done a few of their HMOs, um, and I, I done a, I do a lot of uh, inspections. Or the company does a lot of inspections for universities. So I'm I'm used to seeing a certain type of HMO, which is more the student shared yeah. accommodation where I also stayed, which aren't that very aren't very nice. Um, and then I saw their HMO, and it kind of prompted me saying, right, this isn't my your typical HMO. Yeah, this is re- it's really nice. Um, and that's when it led on to me having a conversation with Malky at the time. And I said, you know, how can I get involved? Because these look really good. So yeah, that was a whole introduction into my, you know, essentially with, with Savoy's. Although it was an introduction, it then led on to you buying property with some colleagues and setting up a, a limited company to buy assets using Savoy's background. Yeah. Um, so I think I, I arranged to meet <coughs> Malkit and I think from 11 weeks from meeting him, uh, I acquired my first site with two of my friends. We started a, a business called Blada Group together. Um, and we used yourself to do the financing and that was a whole new world to me. Mm-hmm. So having the guidance from Malkit and Sanjay and understanding how that process worked um, really gave us the confidence because... And that, that project was, uh, a f- you bought a flat at auction? Yeah, so it was a freehold shop and uppers. Yeah. Um, but the shop was sold in a long lease, so essentially the only benefit was the flat but crucially on, on, a, on a freehold basis. Mm-hmm. If it was leasehold, it wouldn't be in the same yeah. sort of deal. But yeah, it was a freehold um, flat in, in Acton. Which they then converted for you into? To a five bedroom, um, all en suite HMO, yeah, so. And then we returned your money and went on to, you've got what, th- three projects down now? Yeah, three projects on the go. Uh, sorry, um, two projects completed, on, on, nearly completing on the third one and then hopefully fourth in the pipeline. But all three are different, aren't they? Yeah, very different. Um, The first one, so funny enough, I don't think I've bought a standard residential property through that company. Everything we bought is either mixed use or commercial. Mm -hmm. So the first one was, uh, like I said, it was a, even though it was a flat, it comes under mixed use because the freehold title had a shop underneath it. Um, The second site was just a commercial unit in Reading, just outside Reading in a place called Thiel, where it was basically an office building and we converted that into two cottages um, using the permit development rights uh, available to us at the time and then the third one is again similar to the first one but dif- the difference is that we have the benefit of the shop so we yeah. own the shop and actually can convert the shop so we're making a five bedroom HMO above the shop and two flats in lieu of the shop. Yeah and without blowing your trumpet um, I think Savoy's then saw the benefits of bringing you on board through the working with my tours and being an investor and then you became a partner in Savoy Developments. Yeah, I think Savoy Developments was, again, it's a more of a natural progression of what we were doing uh, within Savoy. So I, even when we would, I had my first site through Savoy and they'd done the development, I was very hands-on. I wanted to understand the whole process. Um, once I started understanding the power of how you can refinance and understand the finance aspect of it, everything else kind of just like I was all in. Um, and then we discussed about doing something similar for other clients. And it was good that they had my perspective because coming from being a client to then helping new clients, it was quite an easy, not sell because we weren't ever really selling it, but it was really easy for me to transition to manage other client sites because I was treating them as, as my own, so. So if you can explain a little bit more so people get an understanding of what Savoy Developments now offer. Yeah, so Savoy's Developments is more for um, anyone who's looking to get into property development, but essentially doesn't have the time or the knowledge or the experience, because it's mm-hmm. quite a daunting world. Um, it essentially allows, f- you come to someone like us, we will then go through the sourcing of the property. So we find the right type of deal for you, depending on the f- level of finance they have. And so we find out all the information first, do the sourcing of the property, Um, help through the whole acquisition process because we work with partners. So uh, we work with Ronald Fletcher Baker who does all the conveyancing process. We work with CPC Finance that do the 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 financial aspect. Um, It'd be rude not to uh, do the financial aspect. So it's all kind of like in-house in our wider team so that they get everything that we use in our own power team, the client gets. Um, And then once we get the acquisition done, we do the development ourselves. and I think you may touch on it, but you know, a lot of the lenders need that experience from a developer 
Uh, and if you're just starting out, it's very difficult. To, you, you don't have the experience because a lot of this is, is heavy but, refurb. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's a streamlined process, which we've, I've been working with Savoy's for 10 years and it's built up so that the clients with, as you say, no experience or not having the time to do it, just sit back, leave it all to you and us to, to make sure it works, first of all. That's, the, that's the, the benefit of it. They don't have to waste their time looking for a property, making sure the figures work. You do all that before they even make an offer. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. So everything then is presented to the client so that they have the assurity that, assurity that the, the deal will work. So you know, anytime we find a deal, it's not just going on the portals and saying, right, this may work. It's a lot of background uh, due diligence that gets done. So one, stress test the numbers, and then two, paying the professionals to you know, see if it will work. So architects, planning consultants, engineers, we do all that work up front, so it will save them time and money if they were doing it themselves. Along with us doing the, the finance side, yep. because the lenders rely on your experience, um, they're happy with your track record, and in every case where we've gone to a lender, you as Savoy's, in one entity or the other, have already got your own finance with them. So yeah. it's a risk for you, because yep. if your project goes wrong, you could lose your funding line. Yeah. Um, so it, th there's a benefit for everybody to produce. Yeah, exactly. And, and for, for us, it's, uh, I know it's cliche, but we treat our client sites the same as we treat our own because it's, it's the same process we go through. So we manage that same project the exact same way and the blueprint is the same. And even on completion of the, the project, i.e. when it's a finished article, you don't walk away. You, you then manage it and put the tenants in, which are all professionals. There's no DSS type tenants. And I think that's the key point. And um, like any typical client contractor relationship, the relationship ends once the project's complete. Mm -hmm. um, our relationship almost just starts because we just transfer it over from one team, the development team, into the management team. So, you know, if we were to cut corners or do a cowboy job on one of these sites, we will very quickly get caught out. Um, well, I, I think that's, management. A, that's been proven anyway because the amount of repeat customers that you've had back where they could quite easily on paper technically have the yeah. experience, um, but they realise what's involved. Uh, and I think some are on their second, third, and in yeah. some cases, even their fourth project. Yeah, client retention is really high. Um, and again, it's just more about the transparency that you know f that I got when I was doing my first site uh, with Savoy's, and I'm just trying to do that same thing for our clients. So I'm more the client-facing fo um, um, person that you know I'm their main point of contact. So everything they do is you know they pick up the phone and they will get an update straight away. Um, whereas sometimes when you're speaking to a contractor directly you don't get that transparency. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes there's hidden costs and all these extra bits that that's half the battle of, and stress um, with managing your own site, whereas... Well, what I've noticed is that with the clients on their first project, they spend a lot more time on it with you. When they get to their second or third, yeah. they just leave you alone. Yeah, because they, they understand the process and, and I think it's that trust point. So once they start trusting how we work, and they realize there's no hidden extras and everything is above board, mm -hmm. they, you know, the trust is, then you know part of the process and then they can just you know let us get on with it really so this process or, or this product's really been going on for about two two and a half years yeah we're now at the next stage where you're offering crash courses uh, not mentoring but uh, information courses on I know the one we attended last week commercial to residential yeah and, and the reason for that was uh, we had a, as you can imagine we get a lot of inquiries about people wanting to work with us um, because we do the management side of it there's a very kind of niche area that we work in. Mm -hmm. So we won't touch sites kind of up north, for example, because we don't have the teams physically there to, to do the build and to do the management. Um, so we had a lot of inquiries and people wanted to learn how we do um, our sites because obviously we've got quite a few on the go and we've really exploited the, the, the kind of permitted development changes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these sites that we do is tr we try and avoid planning and we do it through permitted development where there's almost a guarantee of us being able to, to do that um, in reality. So. Um, this crash course came about because we had a lot of inquiries where we couldn't really you know, physically help that client doing the site for them because of the area and their finance. Um, so this was more of a crash call to say, right, this is how we do it. Here's the tools. Um, and it's given them the information that should they want to do it themselves, they've got the information. It, it's quite a lot of... I think what, what, what I got out of it, um, or, or the way it came over, which is quite unique, it, it was an open book. Yeah. There wasn't, you weren't holding anything back. No. There wasn't that, oh, you can do 80% of it, but you've got to come back to us for the other 20. Yeah. 
Um, the, you gave them checklists to go away to, to look at projects. You gave them the calculations. There wasn't anything hidden. No, and I think it's. I mean, I think that I'm a firm believer that you, if you're going to do something like a course or anything that's going to be informative, you have to add value and give value to that person. So by giving a bit away and then you know keeping secrets to ourselves, it, it made no real sense. I think by sharing that knowledge, you know, hopefully these people go on to doing their own sites, and when they need us, we're available. Um, we don't do mentoring, like I said, because we don't have the time. But I think the crash course was a really good eye opener for a lot of the attendees of the amount of work it is because people think it's easy. Right. Well, the, the, the thing I got out of it was that they're either not going to do those type of projects and they're yeah. going to stick to residential to HMOs or they're going to go and use you because yeah. with the amount of information and data and stuff involved, I think you would have scared a lot of them. Not in a bad way, but yeah. made them realise what's well, I, involved. I think, and, that, and that's the difference because, you know, I'm. I'm not saying which courses are out there, but other places may sound make it sound really easy to get involved in, and it can be. But when you're doing the intricacies of how do you actually develop a site, or you know, you, you heard about SAP and uh, utility connections, and it's very very complex stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not straightforward. And you had the site visit. You included that yeah, so, to sh to show in reality of what 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 you've done. Yes. So I think the site visit was probably the best part of it because you're getting the theory, but you're also coupling that from the point of view of we are actually showing you exactly what that meant in reality, um, yep. and I think that a lot of people had good feedback on the site visit. So again, we're doing a similar one in January. Um, on, on, I think it's the twenty first of January, where it's the exact same thing. So we're doing the theory, but we're combining that with a physical site visit, so people actually see how we're implementing these um, strategies. So I think one of the questions everyone will want to know is how do you fit it all in? Um, My tours, Ballada. Savoy's at processes. Uh, I'm I'm like a I'm very very keen on creating streamlined processes. So everything I do is um, I put a lot of effort in making the process work first. So once it's streamlined, I'm able to then just focus on the the main task in hand and not doing so much of the admin. Um, the admin kind of controls itself. Mm -hmm. So for me, I really enjoy it. That's that's the biggest thing. So once yep. you enjoy it, it's not really work. Um, but yeah, it's, it's having the processes in place and, and I'm, I'm kind of you know, speaking to Malcolm and Sandy, they'll tell you, I, you know, I've got a, a structure for everything I do in terms of folder structures or anything I do online, any, any of the, the crash course stuff, everything's kind of structured in a way that I have key targets and, and once I meet them, it's almost like streamlined, I have a process behind it. And if, if from this somebody wanted to reach out and touch, contact you, what, what's the best way of doing it? Uh, so it depends. So there's various, de depending on what they want to contact me on. If it's for obviously the inspections and the um, and the virtual tours, then I've got my tour, which is uh, probably the best way is just the uh, Instagram, which is at my tour UK. Um, from the Ballada Group perspective, that's a personal investment yeah, company, yeah. so there's no real contact for that. But for the development side of things, again, um, Instagram is probably the best way, and it's just um, at Savoy's underscore developments. Excellent. I think we've learned quite a lot about you today and yeah. uh, hopefully there'll be people get in contact with you. Yeah, brilliant. No, it's been good. Excellent. All right. Uh, well, that's, that ends the uh, podcast for today. And if you want to get in touch with Hardeep, uh, he's given you how to. Otherwise, contact me at CPC Finance by all the normal outlets. <laughs>